A lot of people have been asking about the table. What's going on with the table? Can you give us an update on the table? And well, yes, I can tell you, I, I flipped it over. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my table. <laughs> we are having a good bit of time with this. Uh, it has been a while since I've had a chance to get out of this because I've been gone from the shop for almost three weeks now. And it's finally good to get back in here. Um, so last time, we jointed these together and glued the two panels together. Uh, this time we're actually gonna go through flattening the top, doing the last pour of epoxy, and then flipping it over. I know it's not that much material in this particular video, but it's the last step we need to before we start building the base. So let's actually look at what we got going on today. Last time we flattened these individually and we jointed them together, and now I actually wanna go back through and flatten it all as one solid piece. So I'm rebuilding the structure that allows me to use the router jig. Um, and since I'm using a router, I'm okay with pulling out the drill to put this together. <laughs> it ends up being a six foot wide as opposed to only the three foot wide of the last frame. But here you can actually see this T-shaped beam that will be running from end to end. And this will be stiff enough that it will give me a good flat coplanar surface and then all the 2 by 4s running underneath can allow me to then shim the entire tabletop up and get that into a really nice flat arrangement for the router sled. Then the next thing is putting up the router sled, connecting the router, and going to town on it. On this particular pass, I'm really taking off a very thin amount. I'm just bringing everything into a nice clean surface all the way across. Um, most of it, it was only about an eighth inch that I had to, uh, to touch the, uh, the surface of the table. But with a three quarter inch bit, it takes a good long time. I ended up doing two full passes, um, each pass being about two hours worth of work. Uh, really should have gone and gotten a larger router bit, but oh well, uh, it works fairly well. So once we're done with all of the router work, we can clean it off and get our first really good look at what the table will look like now that it's completely smooth. Most of the epoxy is in, and I was just blown away with how this came out. The only problem was that it's covered with all the marks from the router. So it's time to get out the number four and start doing the flattening. This will be getting rid of all of the marks from the router and bringing it into a, a semi-smooth surface. I'll be doing a lot more smoothing and flattening in the future. But I'm just basically having a little bit of fun and going at this, working from wherever I want to to wherever I want to. Ended up finding out that the easiest way to do this is, is across the grain, much like with a scrub plane, but with just a smooth number four. And of course, wood curls are always better than router shavings. Yuck. <laughs> now this board has a ton of bug holes, and I could go through and slowly pour and fill each one, but I just found it easier to use the liquid epoxy from Ecopoxy and uh, to pour it onto the table and move it around with the squeegee. And after moving it back and forth a few times, it filled most of the holes. I had to go back and refill about 20 or so total but uh, just squeegeeing it around to fill all the bug holes worked very well. I got to a certain point and I realized, you know, because I'm just covering this with epoxy, why not just skim coat the entire thing? And I'm not gonna use that as a finish. Although I had thought about finishing the table with epoxy, I, I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I just thought that it might give it a more even color um, as I will then come back through a little bit later and smooth off the epoxy. But if there is any spot where the epoxy kind of soaked into the wood a little bit more, coating the entire table will give it a far more even uh, color all the way across. So I mixed up a bit more and uh, poured it around. And then with the squeegee, it made it fairly quick and easy to then go through and run it all into the, the wood grain. This also then gave me a good chance to see the color, see where all the bug holes are, see if there are any imperfections, anything I want to hit in the future. And I was just really, really happy with this whole process. And as you can see from the color in these slabs, the green tint, the deep red, the outside sapwood, they're just ah, gorgeous. I am so looking forward to the chance where I can put the final finish on it. This table is just going to explode with life. But enough with that, we need to move on to filling the big voids. I left those down about a quarter inch low so that I could fill them up the rest of the way. One of the things with the liquid epoxy is even with mixing it two to one, it's still not really, really hard. It's workable, uh, but I also wanted to have a little bit of a UV protection. So I'm gonna be using this UV epoxy from Ecopoxy. It's a bit thicker, so the bubbles don't rise out of it as well. 
but it does have a UV protection and that makes it uh, far better for the final surface. So the last quarter inch of all of the large fills will be filled with the UV epoxy. Now because it's so thick I didn't want to use the power mixer, I uh, just ended up mixing this by hand trying not to mix in too many bubbles as those don't rise out quite as well. And then you can pour it on. You can see how clear the uh, eco epoxy actually is. This uh, UV epoxy is really darn clear. It's not quite as clear as the liquid plastic, but very, very close. And as long as you're careful with the bubbles, it will leave you with a beautiful glass smooth surface that is both UV resistant and as clean as glass. So that is what I'm going to be using for the final quarter inch on this. Then to get rid of all the bubbles after it's set for a little bit, I'm just gonna hit it with a propane torch. This will pop any of the bubbles. It uh, also speeds up the curing time a little bit by heating it up, and that allows the bubbles to rise out quickly. Uh, just as long as the epoxy wasn't too thick, it works fairly well. Now it's time to flip this thing over. And I brought over a friend of mine, Tim. He came over to the shop to uh, lend me his brawn, and I really am glad he ate his Wheaties because this tabletop is around 400 pounds total on just the top. So we, we slid it off the table basically and then flipped it over and then manhandled this thing into place. So we're each holding about 200 pounds to get it upside down so that now I can work on the bottom. And uh, yeah, that was a lot of work. <laughs> so if anyone's free when I need to carry this upstairs, I'll probably be bringing a crew over. But here's a fun part. We actually got to peel off all the tape and I got to see the spots underneath where the, the, the tape actually leaked. There's only one spot on the other slab, uh, right about where Tim is working when it came through. The problem with that is the, the epoxy then got on the top of the tape as well as underneath the tape. It peels right off the epoxy that's underneath, but the epoxy that's on the top ended up ripping the tape in some places, so it became a little bit more difficult to peel off. But in the end, it all came off, and you can kind of see the mess that ends up being underneath the plastic. But we were just blown away. Uh, the, the look of this, even from underneath with all this mess, is absolutely gorgeous. And I am so, so looking forward to building a base for it. So there you have it. Uh, the table is now upside down and I'm ready to start building the base on this. Now a lot of people are going to ask the question, aren't you going to flatten this side and smooth it out as well? Uh, no, actually I'm not. I'm going to come through here with a plane and card scraper and, and clean up some of these rough edges from the epoxy, but I want to leave the spilled epoxy. I want to leave the, uh, the, the router marks on here. I want the table to tell a story about how it was made. Uh, I'm going to do some flattening for where the structure actually attaches to the base, but I'm going to leave it completely rough. And this is going to be a, a fun project for that. So we're going to be building the base, working on that, and uh, then fitting that into this table. And so this should be kind of an interesting uh, um, dive for some people because a lot of people are going to be thinking, <gasps> no, it's got to be perfectly smooth and perfectly clean. No, I really want this table to have a natural feeling. And then you look underneath and you see this story about how it was made, the epoxy that poured out, the rough grains, and other problems that have had along the way. You can see that in the table itself. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys have been very patient and uh, having a lot of fun waiting for this. Uh, next time we get together, we will start working on the base and ripping all that apart. I'm really looking forward to that step of the project. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.